Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. <laughs> it is day 82, May the 24th, 2017. Tuesday. Wow, what a busy day today, huh? A lot of things going on. I just finished reviewing the transcripts of the hearings with John Brennan and uh, Dan Coates. Of course, you're talking about the former CIA director and the current CIA, CIA director. And, uh, boy, it's just really hard to wrap your mind around everything right now because there's so, so much going on. It's such a political minefield. If you're a politician or if you're a member of the deep state and you're trying to maneuver your way through this minefield, it's uh, extraordinary. Even if you're a very good politician, it's very, very tricky business because you have to remember the dynamic going on here for, uh, for members of the deep state, such as Brennan and Comey and... <clears throat> former members of the Obama administration, Yates and and uh, Valerie Jarrett and and Rice and all these people, they have a very very tricky thing ahead of them because we have three different you know issues going on. We have the Russia involved in our elections. We have the what whether you believe it or not, it's one of the issues on the table. Trump Russia collusion number two, and then of course Trump's claim of surveillance which we know is true. We know he was surveilled. The only question is, was it political or was it uh, uh, warranted based on <clears throat> the evidence um, that was used to justify uh, the surveillance? And of course, how the surveillance was done and how it was unmasked and disseminated and all these sorts of things. So we have three really different uh, dynamics going on. And this makes it very tricky for all these people when they're appearing before these hearings because on one hand, if you're if you're John Brennan or James Comey or, or one of these people, when you're being asked questions, <clears throat> keep in mind all three of these things are being dealt with at the same time. So you're getting questions asked to you if you're John Brennan, <clears throat> excuse me, or or Comey or any of these people. You could get a question asking you about, you know, the surveillance, which there's not many questions coming out about that, but you could get that question, at which point you are a possible suspect. You can turn right around and get the very next question from someone else, and it's about the Russia-Trump collusion, in which case you're a witness. So at any time, all these people appearing before these in these hearings or who may uh, be investigated now as part of Mueller's investigation as the uh, special counsel at any time you could either be a witness or you could be a suspect and so it makes it very very tricky it's like a minefield trying to determine what you can say what you can't say how far you should go whether you should answer this question if you answer this question about surveillance uh, does that put you in jeopardy on another question about collusion he, you know, whatever, you, so these people have to be thinking as they're answering these questions. You know, if it's a question about, <clears throat> say they're asking Brennan about what he knew about uh, Trump and people in Trump's team having associations with Russians, he has to be very, very careful how he answers that question because the very next question could be somebody asking him about conducting the surveillance. So it, it's a minefield if you are one of these people in front of the committees being answering these at being asked these questions so <clears throat> it's a very very tricky game that they're playing right now <clears throat> and uh, so this is mostly what I see in these hearings <clears throat> by uh, from all the people who are being questioned is that they're kind of um, they're kind of all over the place because they don't really know <laughs> from one question to the next, whether or not they're a suspect in conducting illegal surveillance or whether they're a witness uh, who's giving evidence about possible collusion or Trump or uh, Russia meddling in the elections. So it appears to me that what we're seeing right now with all these people is a lot of posturing because <clears throat> there's just too many unknowns. They really don't know where any of these investigations are going. Now, most people believe that if there was any evidence of Trump-Russia collusion that would have been disclosed by now, um, if there was any real evidence that Russia uh, hacked or manipulated the election, 
<clears throat> it's all it's basically been asserted that that is the fact but now that we have a special prosecutor if he attempts uh, which is a whole different deal than a congressional hearing because in a court <clears throat> which is where the special prosecutor will be operating with the judge and the jury hearsay is not admissible as I mentioned in a previous video Mueller cannot just come out and 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 make an assertion and go off on a narrative that's based on Russia meddling in the elections or hacking into the DNC or whatever unless he provides proof he has to be able to prove that that point before he can begin extrapolating on it you see so it's very tricky and these people who are being called to testify in front of Congress understand that there's too many unknowns it's a, it's a minefield it's like it's like uh, you're a you're, you're a soldier advancing toward the enemy and you know they've mined the area you have no idea where those mines are okay so you're tiptoeing and dancing around and uh, you don't know how it's all going to turn out so this makes it very very treacherous for all of these people who are appearing in these hearings and remember they're all part of the deep state and the deep state is uh, quite the monster talk about the swamp monsters well that's really who the swamp monsters are they are the deep state which is really the combination of the intelligence community and the uh, defense uh, establishment and the reason why they can be so dangerous and the reason why they could and are trying to take down Trump and why they believe they can have some su success in if not taking him down and forcing him to resign or forcing impeachment hearings which I, I, I don't think would succeed because the Republicans do control both houses and they have to be concerned uh, for the politics you know they know that it won't play very well with their base a Republican Congress no it won't it will not play well with their base if they uh, jump on side with the Democrats in the deep state to impeach Trump this could do them personal political harm and remember in Washington DC it's every man for himself and politics are everything they come first they come before anything and everything so uh, the reason a deep state can be so effective is because the intelligence community can they can make stuff up they can make things up they can take little things that are nothing and turn them into something and then they can leak that stuff into the media so then the media starts talking about it and then they start asking the intelligence community about it who planted the idea in the first place the intelligence community will plant the seed allow it to grow then the media as soon as the, the, the sprouts the media jumps on it and then they create this loop between the intelligence community and the media this back and forth with the intelligence community planting the the thought and then the media reacting to it and creating this loop which never ends and now that you have Mueller who is part of the deep state who's a very close friend of James Comey um, and and they're working together and they're also associated with the former administration officials and intelligence people as well as even the current ones so Donald Trump is in very very dangerous territory extremely dangerous territory that's why I was one of those people who didn't see a special prosecutor as being a good thing the fact of the matter is the the hearings in Congress were going to produce absolutely nothing but now that you have a special prosecutor he, he, he has total he, he can go anywhere he wants to go with this investigation he can get into looking into financial background friends of Trump associates of Trump uh, he can look at all sorts of things and special prosecutors like to get scalps and um, it's very dangerous and I think that um, I think that it's it's the only thing I think that will allow Trump to survive this is if his base stays with him if Trump loses his base it's probably over because the deep state can destroy you and uh, so it will be uh, 
of extreme importance that that uh, Trump supporters stay with him, and uh, that's probably the only thing that will save him, because it's only that that will prevent the Republicans who despise him as much as the D Democrats do, who are all part of the deep state and the swamp. Uh, it's the only thing that will prevent them from taking the lead or moving ahead with any type of impeachment hearings or continuing the dog and pony show. Because, you know, it's a can't lose for the Democrats because even if the investigation that Mueller is going to conduct which will take at least a year. This could go on for a year or two. It could go into the midterm elections and beyond. And the whole time, every single day, it's going to be getting airtime in, in the liberal media, which is 90% of the media. So Trump is surrounded. He's under vicious attack. He doesn't even have his own team on his side. The only thing Donald Trump has is his supporters, and it may be the only thing that allows him to survive the attack of the deep state, which is um, unlike anything I've ever seen. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and uh, lie to you and sugarcoat things for you. Um, you know, the deep state uh, can, can bring, you know, a lot of heat on you. That's why a lot of people knew that Trump had to really drain the swamp. I think he still has people inside. Uh, inside his administration. He still has a lot of Obama holdovers who are part of the deep state who are out to get him. Everybody's out to get him, trust me. Everybody, even Republicans. He's got very, very few people on his side. And uh, when you run into the deep state, they, uh, they are not called the deep state for nothing. And uh, they can be very effective. So my general overall view of the hearings and all the things that are going on right now are that uh, it's serious, it's a serious matter and Trump is under a severe attack. And uh, unfortunately the special prosecutor, uh, this is gonna drag on and on and on. And uh, had he not been appointed, probably just with the hearings in Congress, this thing would have just about went away because they really uh, had not seen, nor had the intelligence community or the FBI provided any real hard information that there was Trump-Russia collusion. <clears throat> and the only evidence they've really shown or talked about of Russia even meddling in the elections is the accusation that <clears throat> they hacked the DNC, released that information to WikiLeaks, and uh, allegedly that's what contributed greatly to Hillary Clinton losing uh, the campaign. Now, we all know that's bullshit, but that is the narrative, and it's selling with a fair amount of people, and it's being repeated day after day after day in the media, and eventually it takes hold. So it's a very dangerous time. Um, John McCain was in rare form. Like I said, I just read the transcripts of both the hearings from Brennan and uh, Coates, and uh, it's just unbelievable, uh, John McCain. I mean, you people in Arizona, I mean, I'm sure you're fine people out there, but my goodness, uh, there's probably no more venomous, vicious, nasty individual with more intensity to destroy Donald Trump, which is extraordinary because it's a man of his own party. I mean, uh, John McCain hates Donald Trump so bad that he would be willing to take to send his own party uh, into the pits of hell for because when you have a president get impeached it it uh, it reverberates throughout the entire party uh, members Republican a lot of Republican members will lose their seats the Republicans would probably lose control of one or both of the houses uh, it would be a stain on them for two to three election cycles John McCain doesn't care John McCain is willing to do extraordinary damage to the Republican Party. He's willing to uh, allow Democrats to come back into power with their bad economic policy, bad trade policy, and everything else that goes along with it. Uh, you know, you would think that John McCain would at least look at Donald Trump and say, well, at least, you know, I don't like the guy personally, but hey, he's good for the country on economics, on trade. Uh, he's, he's doing a very good job in foreign policy. So, you know, 
you would think that this is how John McCain might react, but unfortunately not. Uh, I read the transcripts, and uh, probably no one is digging and digging and digging any harder on trying to find uh, collusion uh, than John McCain. And of course, remember, it was John McCain that passed the dossier on to uh, Director Comey. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, it's ugly right now, and it's uh, very, um, very disappointing. For the most part, the hearings today are pretty much like what they have been. You have the Democrats and John McCain really pressing the uh, Russia issue and Russia-Trump collusion, and then you have Republicans mostly. Um, you have Republicans top wanting to talk about the leaks, you know, finding the leakers. So, uh, just a little bit on Brennan. Uh, he testified a couple things. Uh, Brennan testified, uh, and of course, remember he's a pathological liar, a huge anti-Trumper, and he's and he's probably deeply, deeply involved in the illegal surveillance on Trump, which is why he was very careful tippy-toeing around because he knows that he, he can be both a witness uh, to possible uh, Russia involvement in the election, Russia-Trump collusion, but he can also very easily, with the flip of a coin, a different question, be a suspect in the illegal surveillance of Trump and his team. But Brennan basically testified that the CIA had picked up contacts between Russia and people involved in the Trump campaign, and he left open the possibility that Ru that the Russian officials may have been successful in recruiting some of Trump's aides. And uh, but he doesn't know this for sure. So what he gave us was a bunch of speculation. He gave us no actual evidence. He didn't tell us how he how he learned that. What the CIA picked up what contacts he was talking about, what level these contacts would be, whether they were private or government, whether they were intelligence or business. Uh, he doesn't really say. Uh, so he, he, he was really speaking in a lot of hypotheticals. And he was very careful in the way he danced around things because, again, Brennan knows that depending on which way the investigation goes and depending on things that are unknown, such as whistleblowers, uh, sources and other things like that that may come forward and he might just as easily find himself sitting in front of a hearing being grilled as a potential suspect and being involved in the criminal activity of illegal surveillance of Trump and his team while at the same time he's trying to advance his agenda which is to advance the idea that that there was collusion or certainly they had contacts that led them to believe there may be some collusion but again, if they had any evidence, they certainly would have brought it forward, especially John Brennan. He despises Trump, still despises Trump. He just gave a speech over the weekend where he, he was, uh, uh, went on about a 15-minute tirade against Trump. Uh, this was just a few days ago. So, you know, uh, this is what we have. <clears throat> now, Dan Coates, on the other side, who was in front of the Armed Services Committee, uh, who just became the new CIA director, is still kind of getting his bearings on things. Um, he did the same thing that Mike Rogers did on the crucial question. Uh, he, he basically said that, um, that he would decline comment on the main question he was asked on whether Trump asked him to deny evidence of collusion between Trump and Russia. Russia though he said he uh, he would leave the door open to answering such questions in the future, meaning once he had more information about that. So this is something that he was pushed on by the Democrats and John McCain, is whether or not um, Trump, because this is another angle on trying to get impeachment, uh, is to say that, well, Trump obstructed justice by trying to force the FBI director to drop the investigation uh, into Trump, Russia, and uh, Coates, of course, did the same thing Mike Rogers did, which they uh, decided not to comment on that one way or another until they have more information, which shows you that they also uh, are in the same situation. They don't know all the things that may come out or may be learned. So nobody really wants to come out and go too far 
in any one direction because there's too many unknowns. There's too many mines in the minefield and they don't know when they might step on one. They have to be very, very careful what they say because one thing they say in one context may be evidence of some case they're trying to make. It could also be turned around on them and be used as evidence against them as a possible suspect in some criminal activity they were involved in and that would be in the case of their surveillance. Not many questions today on the surveillance though. It was mostly on the Republican side focusing on leaks on the Democrat side and John McCain focusing on Trump-Russia collusion and whether or not Trump was trying to um, persuade or order the previous FBI Director Comey into dropping the investigation or what have you. So this is pretty much what it looked like to me reading the transcripts. I didn't watch it, which you know, you, you by watching sometimes you get a different perspective, but just the reading of the transcripts, this is what it looked like to me, pretty much uh, the same thing we've been getting. So I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know because they don't know. I mean, again, it's nobody really knows from one day to the next when they're going to be a witness or a suspect. <laughs> so uh, it's a minefield and they're all playing it very, very carefully and it's a very, very tricky thing. But the bottom line is none of it is good for Trump, okay? Uh, there, there's nothing good coming out here. And again, as I've been saying since I started doing these Towergate videos, the Republicans and the Democrats, the establishment, the swamp, the deep state, whatever you want to, however you want to define these people, all of these people are beholding to the deep state because the very same thing that's being done to Trump can be done to them by these intelligence communities and they know it. They're terrified of the deep state. The Republicans especially are terrified of the liberal media. They're terrified of Democrats. Uh, they have no backbone and they're not going to use a single bit of personal political capital to defend Donald Trump. He has very, very few people uh, behind him. Really, his supporters is all he's got. He has no friends in Washington. None. Even the people around him, I think, are suspect. Very suspect. Um, so that's my take on the hearings. Uh, now, to a couple comments uh, from previous videos, uh, to, to one of my favorite subscribers, Mora, brought up a very good point uh, that uh, James Comey has um, decided not to testify uh, or cancel his testimony, which was supposed to happen, I think, tomorrow uh, or today, be Wednesday. Uh, he was supposed to testify, and he's now he's backed out on that. But it looks like he's a, totally backed out. It looks like what he's saying is that he's postponed the hearing, uh, appearing before the Congress, which I believe is the Senate and the House both. Uh, Comey is postponed that until he speaks with this special prosecutor, Mueller, who's a very good friend of James Comey. They've worked together in the past when they were both uh, at the Justice Department. They are very close friends. They're both part of the deep state. They both are most interested in protecting the deep state, which is why, again, I don't think that we're going to see anything. The main story we cover here on Towergate is the surveillance by the Obama administration and the deep state on Trump and his and his uh, uh, team. That's the number one focus of my videos on Towergate. But we see that narrative getting less and less attention in favor of the other two narratives, Trump, Russia, and Russia, and Russia meddling in the elections. And that's because none of these guys want to hold the deep state accountable. None of these guys uh, want to do that. So it's, as I've been saying since the very beginning of my Towergate videos, I think the only way we get to the bottom of this is either number one, some source or sources uh, who have real hard evidence or are willing to go personally and testify uh, and not remain unnamed, come forward to some credible journalist or journalists and disclose some smoking gun information which could blow this thing wide open, meaning the surveillance issue. I think it's going to have to come from whistleblowers or from some journalists who are on the story who discover something, maybe Sarah Carter, uh, maybe uh, this guy from Fox.com, uh, Adam Housley, maybe someone through the internet, maybe some sort of a leak. And of course, we still have the Seth Rich thing coming out, which I'll get to in just a minute. 
So I, I think that that's what it's going to take because I don't see e uh, either Republicans or Democrats wanting to expose the deep state, uh, the CIA, the NSA, uh, the FBI, or any of these people. They don't. They do not want to uh, expose them for being part of a gigantic uh, conspiracy to take down Trump using the intelligence community. Uh, none of these people want to uh, take that political risk, and it's a great risk to take personally for them, politically, uh, and of course it's their friends. They, 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 they don't want to take down the deep state, not for President Trump. So I think you're going to have to have a whistleblowers come forward, or Trump is going to have to pursue this in civil court, because remember, he still has a case in civil court, as does his attorney Michael Cohen. Donald Trump could still uh, pull, uh, file a lawsuit, a civil suit against BuzzFeed and get BuzzFeed to, uh, to disclose or at least ways to be able to. Uh, uh, you can get a lot of information out of BuzzFeed because the dossier was passed to them from somebody and it was the full dossier, not just bits and pieces, which means it probably had to come from someone in the intelligence community or someone high up in the Obama administration. And if you could get them in civil court, and maybe that's what Trump is planning. Maybe he's going to let this thing all play out, and at some point he'll move into civil court. But he's got to survive uh, the onslaught that he's facing right now, and it's going to go on for a very long time now because of the special prosecutor. This could drag on for a year or two. So in the whole time, every day, it's going to be hitting the news. It's, it's going to be brutal, unbelievably brutal, and uh, Trump has no friends in Washington. So it's, it's not good news. It's not good news. Okay, so uh, Kim.com. Uh, Kim.com was supposed to come out today, and uh, I watched uh, or I read his thing. Uh, and uh, I was hoping he would come out with some actual, you know, saying that he had, you know, that he was prepared to send or publish online emails, which would show Seth Rich's, uh, Seth Rich, his address in the header of the email, having sent something to WikiLeaks or uh, himself, but that is not what we got. Uh, basically what we got from Kim.com is that he'd be willing to come and testify to what he knows, uh, but the United States government would have to obviously drop their charges against him for copyright violations for uh, when he owned Mega Upload. He also has a countersuit going with the government, suing them because they confiscated about $11 million in cash and property. So it's hard to know what angle he's playing. I do believe that he probably does have information that he probably did communicate with Seth Rich, but documents, evidence, hard evidence is what we need. And until we see that, it's just speculation. And uh, whether or not Mr. Mueller will want to uh, look into that. I don't know. I'm, I'm working on a video on that. I just haven't decided exactly what angle to hit it from. They're just, it's so confusing right now with so many different things going on. Um, so we also had a question on Michael Flynn. <clears throat> That's another very complicated issue. Michael Flynn, of course, wanted immunity. He was not granted immunity. So then he decided he would plead the fifth. Now, you, when you plead the fifth, there's two different things that are going on here. You can plead the fifth if you are a private citizen. However, if you are a corporation, it's my understanding that you cannot, and that the Congress, if you if if you own a corporation and they subpoena you or documents, you have to provide them. If not, you can be held in contempt. If you're held in contempt, they can forward this uh, to the attorney general and you can actually be facing criminal violations of criminal charges. So it's a different situation. So initially they were approaching this from Michael Flynn as a private citizen. His attorney, of course, has advised him uh, not to follow through with the documents or any testimony. And it's unlikely that Republicans would call him in because they control both committees to testify if they know he has not provided the documents and they know that he's going to plead the fifth. They probably wouldn't waste their time. But now it appears that not just Democrats, but even the head of the committee uh, that's looking into this, which is a Republican named Richard Burr. If Richard Burr is your congressman, you need to be hammering him with emails and phone calls about what in the hell he is doing. 
because he is pushing and pushing and pushing. And this whole Flynn thing is nothing more to do with anything but politics. It's, it's, it's another angle at harming Trump. They don't give a damn about Michael Flynn in the Congress, whether or not he took a few thousand dollars for a speech. They don't give a damn about any type of collusion he may have had or any type of dealings he may have had. The only thing that Michael Flynn serves is a, another way to get at Donald Trump. And Mr. Burr must know this. He can't be that stupid. So Mr. Burr, the Republican who heads that committee, if he pushes for these subpoenas on Michael Flynn, uh, not as an individual but on his corporation, that he, he has a business which is a corporation, and if they push that and they go through all the way through to subpoenas, which may or may not happen because there are a few Republican members on that committee who are not going along with that because, again, they probably live in voting districts where Donald Trump won by a healthy margin. And that's what this all comes down to. It's, it's for these guys, it's personal. It's, it's about them. It's about their, their power. And that's what they're looking at is the politics of this. They could give a damn about Donald Trump whether he's impeached or not. They could give a damn whether he's drugged through the mud. They could give a damn whether or not Michael Flynn is drugged through the mud. They could give a damn about any of this. It's all about their own per personal political survival. That's what it's about. And Mr. Burr, you are a slime ball. And if Mr. Burr, Richard Burr, the head of that committee, if he is your congressman, man, you need to be burning up his phone lines and, uh, and emailing him because he is a traitor. He knows exactly what this is about. He knows exactly what this is about. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> Him and McCain and all the rest of these people. We also know that I mentioned, failed to mention one thing here. Uh, that in the testimony uh, by John Brennan today, uh, he did mention that this information that he says he has, which he didn't provide any, uh, any uh, evidence for anything that he said, actually. It was all, you know his opinion, I guess. He says he did pass this information on to the FBI, uh, that there had been contacts between Russia and people involved in the Trump campaign. He gave no specifics or no evidence, but he said he did pass this information to the FBI, which is kind of strange because James Comey, uh, when he'd been asked about similar things, he never, he never mentioned any, uh, anything about being given information by John Brennan of the CIA. But again, this is very tricky because James Comey knows that if this whole surveillance thing comes out, this would only be more incrimination uh, for him because then he would have already stated that just as John Brennan probably screwed up by admitting that he passed this information to the FBI because that shows that you had a collaboration between the FBI and the CIA uh, about these contacts. You know, at some point, you know, if they want to impeach Trump or if they want to try to make this stuff stick, they're going to have to actually produce some evidence. They can't just say, oh, well, we had this information uh, and then not tell us what it was. At some point, you got to come out and show, what your, show your cards. And I don't think they're really holding any. It's all political. And that's what it looks like to me because they have no idea how this is going to turn out. They don't know that a week from now or two weeks or a month or three months or a year from now, some whistleblower may come out and go to Sarah Carter at Circa News. Some whistleblower may uh, uh, leak something to WikiLeaks. Uh, who knows? Maybe Julian Assange will, will come out and release some uh, WikiLeaks information that, that shows uh, emails directly from Seth Rich or something. We have no idea. There's so many balls in the air right now that no one has any idea where this could all shake itself out. And, and, and these people appearing in front of the Congress right now, uh, Brennan and Comey, that's why Comey wants to talk to Mueller. These guys don't want to testify. They don't know what the hell to say because they don't know what could come back and bite him in the butt later because there's too many balls in the air and too many unknowns. It's a circus. It's nutty. But the bottom line is, through all of this, it's, 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 it's going to affect Trump's ability to get his agenda passed. And it could cause him to become to a point where he's just simply not able to function, in which case you might get impeachment hearings. Now, 
I don't think that they would get the votes, uh, but the damage would be done. Trump would be done. If they can't if they can't derail him, force him to resign, or impeach him, they can at least ways do as much damage to him as possible so that he does not get reelected. Um, and of course, why the Republicans are going along with this, I don't know, other than just because they hate him as bad as the Democrats do. They're all protectorants of the deep state. And these people, if this is such a good reason why we should vote the sons of bitches out. You know, why we keep reelecting these people. They care more about their own personal political survival. They care about everything in the world else other than the country. They don't care about your damn economy. They don't care if you have a job. They don't care about your benefits. They don't care about your, your life. They don't care about nothing. These people are totally about number one. And you ain't number one. Fact, you aren't even number two. You're not even on the list. Let's talk about one last thing before I go. It's kind of a long video at this point. The media circus. People keep saying, why, why, why does the media and the left-wing media, MSNBC, uh, 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 CNN, Washington Post, Washington Times, blah, 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 all these, why does the liberal media keep hammering this Russia uh, and Russia-Trump collusion, Russia, 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 why do they keep hammering this day after day despite the fact that there's no evidence? Well, it's very simple. Ratings. Ratings. Have you seen CNN and MSNBC's ratings? Have you seen the viewership of Washington Post and the New York Times online readership uh, views on their webpage? Skyrocketing because they have created this narrative that Trump could be impeached at any moment. So what they have is they have millions and millions of millions of Democrats all across the country and people who hate Trump around the world who are glued to their television sets every single night. They're reading the Washington Post and the New York Times every single day. Probably people even paying for a lousy subscription to their online feed <laughs> because the narrative has been created that Trump could be impeached at any time. Every single day, they've got their viewers hanging right on the edge. It's like it's like they're dangling this uh, this prize in front of them, and they just keep dangling it. It's the shiny object that they just keep dangling in front of their audience, and their audience just every every night they come to be uh, you know. Uh, fed, they, they come to be fed, <laughs> and and they get fed every night with more and more and more propaganda. These millions and millions of millions of Democrats actually believe that that there is hard evidence that Trump has been involved in collusion with the Russians and and meddling and and uh, he's a, a fascist. And I mean that you know you name it, they believe it all. And so the the so the reason that the media is running this, plus they've got the intelligence community trying to destroy Trump, leaking stuff every single day to them, every single day, more leaks from anonymous sources, from within the intelligence community, from within the law enforcement community. Uh, and plus you got the ex-Obama people out there, they're still out there, they still have a lot of intel from when they were uh, in office, uh, and in those bureaucracies, they're still leaking stuff. So this is all, this whole thing, is about the destruction of, of President Trump. That's what it's all about, to protect the deep state. It's the deep state versus us. That's what it was in the election. And Trump beat him. And like I said in the previous video, they couldn't beat him at the ballot box, so now they're going to beat him some other way. So this is the reality of the situation uh, as we stand. Um, it is day 82 of Tower Gate, May the 24th, 2017. Uh, we'll continue to watch all these things and see how it all plays out. But um, I really don't know uh, what to make of it now other than it's a, it's a hell of a mess. It's a hell of a mess. And uh, if Trump survives it, he, if Trump survives it, he will go down as one of the greatest presidents in history. Just being able to survive this type of attack from all angles by his own party, by the deep state, the media, everyone. I mean, it's just it's extraordinary. And uh, we never hear about, you know, the good things that he's doing with the economy, with trade, uh, all the progress he's making, his success in his foreign policy, uh, the uh, amount of illegals flowing into the country is down by 70%. I mean, he's doing some really, really good things, but uh, you'll ne never hear any of it, even from the Republicans. The Republicans have no backbone. They're terrified. 
they're uh, they're they don't support him. And like I say, the only uh, Trump is is uh, all we've got, and we are all he's got. So I would. Uh, the only thing I can say is uh, don't lose the faith. Remain loyal. Don't forget what this election was about, and don't forget that when this whole thing started, we knew we were taking on the deep state. We beat them in the election, but that that was just that was just one battle. This is a much larger and longer war, and it will never ever end. That is the reality. On day 82, May 24, 2017, Towergate. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for. Con for uh, contributing and sharing my videos. I appreciate every one of you uh, who take the time every day to watch the videos. You guys uh, take care and be safe. Bye.